we have a scoop for you about uh, some changes that we are seeing on the ground that have to do with naturalization applications. This is something that, you know, sometimes we get information ahead of time that, you know, USCIS has not actually published in formal guidance yet, but because of our, our work doing cases individually with clients, we start to see these changes. We talk with officers actually in the offices and we find out information advance ahead of time. So uh, what, what we have found out about the naturalization cases is that, you know, typically, and according to the paper, according to the forms currently, you aren't required to submit passport photos with your naturalization application. However, there's been an internal policy change where if they haven't gotten passport photos from you in the last five years, they're actually now requesting them. So we, we've seen that at this point, and, and from what we've um, actually heard from officers we've been discussing this with, right now they're just sending out RFEs, requests for additional evidence for people who you know, didn't submit passport photos, because it's not even on the list at this point. Um, and, you know, if they haven't submitted passport photos in the last five years, that's how they're handling it right now, but additional guidance is coming out. So if you're currently in the process of filing a naturalization application, we would recommend that you just get some passport photos. Um, you can either submit them with your filing, or if you're going to a naturalization interview coming up, you might want to bring some passport photos just so that you'll be prepared no matter what they, they ask you for. So um, that is our recommendation. That's our, our scoop. We like to give you guys the, the fast news before it's even announced publicly. So hopefully that helps some of you save a little bit of grief and a little bit of paperwork. That's always our goal. We also have another naturalization related topic, um, which has to do with the, the testing. And this has been announced publicly. We've discussed this before, but we wanted to just mention that um, you know, they have implemented the changes to the actual naturalization test. So one of the main things that, that our applicants are noticing that's different is that there are now 20 questions that they ask you. Um, previously, and you've probably heard us say this so many times over the years, previously the way the test worked is of that booklet of questions that you study, they would randomly select 10 questions and then you only had to get six of them right uh, to pass. And once you got six right, they didn't ask you any more questions. So some people, you know, a lot of people will be asked maybe six or seven questions and then the test would be done and it was very quick feeling. The way the rules have been changed now, the pass rate is still the same, they're, but they're gonna ask you 20 questions and you know, you have to get 12 right. But even once you get to 12 right, they're still gonna ask you the other eight. So it's just gonna feel a lot longer, um, a little bit more intense, but the good thing is you already know the questions ahead of time. So as usual, the way to prepare for that is simply to study the questions, memorize you know, one of the acceptable answers and just be ready to go, but be aware of that. So if you've been researching that online, you might notice that, that it's not, you know, we don't want people to feel like, oh, that's not what I heard was gonna happen. And <laughs> they're just grilling me here. It feels like this is going on forever. So be prepared to be asked all 20 questions.